Hello, people on the internet. Do you like the color red and things that zap you when you stick your tongue on them? Well, fantastic. My MR2 here, Mr. Dose, is red, and I guarantee if I stick my tongue on one of these wires, it will poke me. I have no idea where I'm going with this intro, but I know that board right there has a couple more things I need to button up before I can hopefully not let the smoke out of this thing because I'm going to be so sad if that happens. But first, I need to go get my hair done. There you go. Just like that. Magic. That was so cheesy. Let's, let's do some work. And done. Done, done, done. Done. Well, kind of done. Speed sensor plug, I don't have. Aside from installing the plug on the speed sensor, which I don't need to start the car up, and the starter, two starter wires, that's it, the wiring's done. That was bothering me, I had to do it. Ooh, it's a razor blade. That would be a bad day, wouldn't it? Don't worry, those are all gonna get cut once I make sure the car runs. I gotta get this thing up in the air because if you notice, there's a big wire hanging down underneath it. That was for the factory cruise control, which will no longer work and I'm very sad about. Unless I went to drive by wire. I'm sure I might be able to figure something out eventually though. So it's not lost permanently. Just gotta figure it out. Just so I don't have any water or heat ingress into the cabin, I'm gonna do this foil tape on either side of this pass-through. These older Toyotas use this little deep-fried robotic caterpillar corpse known as a 1.0Y fusible link that goes to the starter. This, yeah. I just need to ops check the car. I just need to make sure that everything works. I'm going to order one. Let me just give this thing a quick functionality check make sure it actually does its job. At this camera angle, the TT actually looks kind of good. Only certain camera angles though. Jeez, crusty old crap. This feels wrong after how OCD I've been about every other aspect of this wiring. <laughs> to solder this garbage back on here. It's literally just to test it, that's all. Why am I even soldering? I'll just connect it with a connector. Ooh. Getting off to a late start today because I had to get a haircut and then I had to do adulting before coming here to work on the car. So I'm kind of behind right now with how much work I should have done and how much I need to have done before this next video comes out. It's a little stressful. I hope this is the right plug. Oh, this is, why would they, why would they make the plug facing the engine block? That's just ignorant. This is supposed to be it. This is the factory plug that goes to the starter solenoid. I don't understand. And that's definitely a different shape. Somebody failed at Legos, whoever engineered that. I have my camera's monopod placed in my belly button right now. That fits better than that plug on that starter, so I'll know it does. It's already 10.30 at night, and yada. It is offensively hot out there. It's ridiculous, this heat wave's crazy. So this big crusty pile of hose needs to get deleted with this new one. Do you guys see what I'm about to do? These hose don't nose. How many times will Sarah bleed the coolant on her MR2? I think this has to be at least like the 10th time I'm gonna have to bleed the coolant on this car. And it's the most miserable thing to ever have to do. Oh yeah, this is gonna suck. Yep, here it all goes. There's another 45 minutes to an hour of work bleeding the coolant. Fun. Oh, it's peeing on the floor, yay. I'm so glad I'm getting rid of this crusty pipe. 
That's what she said? Oh, wrong bracket. Oh no, right bracket. Out, out of my car. Out, 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 go. Oop, try not to drip any of this anywhere. See if I can do this without scratching the crap out of everything. This is that hard pipe that was on the firewall that that new coolant hose deletes. Weight savings, like two pounds. Test fitting the new intake with this uh, coolant hose delete, it's just barely gonna make it on there. I think it'll be fine. It shouldn't kink once I tighten it down. Take a shot every single time I raise and lower this car. You might as well tighten the bottom of it since this part can't really be adjusted very much. I have been fighting this thing for the past hour, trying different combinations of routing hoses. And I think I finally got a combination that works. I took this heater hose that goes to the upper heater core line and flipped it. So the end that was on the engine side is now on the firewall side. This right here though, I'm not really a fan of. I had to put it on an angle so it wouldn't kink underneath here. It's tight, but I don't like this. And I don't like these style hose clamps, but the other one doesn't work, so. I still want the boost gauge on the steering column as well as the wideband sensor up there to work but they are independent from the ECU. They don't control anything anymore. So I'm gonna mount the map sensor for that gauge back here and the O2 is plugged in already. I know this looks like a rat's nest of wires, but you have to realize I gotta loom all this stuff. So I made a lot of these a little bit longer in case I want to route them differently or trim them. So that's why it looks messy. I gotta clean all this grime off the paint down here. This looks absolutely disgusting. I'm not gonna stand for that. By taking that coolant hard pipe off, I was able to free up a bolt hole on the firewall down low that I could move the boost control solenoid to, so. I think that's a pretty good spot for it. It's right next to the cam lum blah blah blah, as well as the map sensor. I'm glad they incorporated this bend in the hose right here because it gives tons of clearance for the cable linkage to the transmission. Oh yeah, that's much better. Much better, you can't even see this stuff now. It's nice and tucked away down here. I can put this plastic shield back on, I guess. I don't need this off anymore. I feel like people don't talk about the importance of modifying a car and using parts from the same aftermarket manufacturer. Because if you use parts from various manufacturers, you run into issues where they don't play well together because they were never engineered to be installed with anything other than the factory components or other components from that manufacturer. All right. Let's get this thing on there. Since this coolant hose is in an area that's gonna be rubbing up against a bunch of other stuff, I'm gonna slide this little chafe guard off the factory hose onto it. I don't know if it's gonna make it harder to get the intake past. I actually don't know if this is gonna work. I just don't like the bend that it is at. Between today and yesterday, it's been pretty rough trying to get any work done on the MR2. We're having our monthly car meet right now. Everyone's just starting to show up. I hear cars pulling in, so then we got a food truck too. I just spent the past hour and a half cleaning up my shop. It was starting to get to be a mess in here. Looks a little bit more presentable, I guess. Considering I do a terrible job at announcing when our car meets are at, I am amazed at how many people are here. This is a pretty good turnout. I haven't filmed anything the entire time. This is our car meet. I was actually surprised how many cars have showed up. They're all the way wrapped around the building. They're on the back side of that building. There's all kinds of them. That's an Evan's head. That is a Hellcat on like 26s, I think. No joke, this is a Hellcat on 20, I don't know, I think they're probably bigger than a 26. 24s, oh, I guess this is not as big as I thought it was. Why don't you have a giant Harrison performance sticker on it yet? Are you gonna do like a wrap on it like you did the TTR? No, I really like just the way it looks. Thank you for just leaving it like yeah, that. I just wanna leave it. It's very nice looking, it has all the carbon on it. Oh my God, there's a lot of cars hey, over here. You're the only person I know over here. That's funny. Okay, so are we ripping your car out again? <laughs> no. Yeah. So? Oh wow, there's like cars on the back side too. That's cool, it's a Merc wagon. 
If any of you are watching this that came out and I didn't speak to you because I'm shy, thank you for coming out to our car meet. I absolutely love Kylie's Miata. I think it's my favorite car that came tonight because it's just so adorable. And she turned on her underglow. You have pizza too? Huh? You got more wings? Well, no, I got wings to take home. I never got my wings. Oh. You came to our meet just to get wings? Yes. You came to our meet to get meat. Yes. And I guess straight up the going fresh. home with food part yeah. didn't happen until well, so, now. Oh, I have an ice cream. Hello. Welcome to the following day. So I am going to now attempt to not let the smoke out. Okay. Wish me luck. I think the smartest thing to do would be to systematically add power. I'm gonna use my power probe. That way I have a fused source of power. Put this ground cable. So I'll hook this up to the car's ground. And then this hooked up to the battery. Here's the positive going to the car. This thing has a fuse in it. So when I touch it to the positive terminal, going out to the rest of the vehicle, if there's any massive shorts, it'll blow the fuse in here before it does any damage. So. Ooh. Okay, so my windshield wipers are on. <laughs> oh, I think I left the AC on. Totally forgot to check to see if the key was in the on position. My fog lights were turned on too, but everything is good. Just feeling to see if any of these wires feel hot. I know this sounds ridiculous to some people. Well, power's connected. Everything seems fine. I turn the key in the on position. Everything still seems fine. I just gotta, I gotta literally go buy a laptop now so I can unlock the ECU and load my base map. Unfortunately, the Link ECU is not Mac friendly. All this test really demonstrates though is just applying power up to the relays. I didn't energize anything because I'm not trying to start the car because there's no fuel line connected to the fuel filter over there. As much as I need to be working on this car right now, I did a poll on Instagram and 93% of you wanted this to be in a YouTube video. So I figured this is a perfect time to do it. This is a status update of all of my vehicles because you keep asking what's going on with this car or this car. I'm gonna show you right now all of them, how much percent complete they are, what it's waiting on, why I'm not working on it, and what I am actually doing to it. So that way you know everything that's going on with all of my project cars and you are caught up. First up, the MR2. You guys obviously know you're watching an MR2 video right now. The car is currently inoperable. I would say it's 90% complete. This is all that's left until the car is actually drivable and I'm gonna finish it as you're watching this video. And then the only other thing that I have pending is I ordered new wheels for the car. So that's gonna happen. The Ranger, it's currently drivable. Overall progression, I'd say it's 10% done. What I have left, frame off. That's, that's it. It's just restoring the parts under the truck and then putting them back on all fresh and new and making that truck look like it did the day it came off the assembly line. The TT, currently drivable-ish. I mean, it runs and it moves under its own power. Overall, the car, I'd say is 25% done. The dual mass flywheel that came apart to two pieces is really all that prevents that car from being drivable. But other than that, you guys want me to put in the same effort I did to the MR2 to the TT, which means the car has got to get painted, body worked, and I guess probably build the engine to make it actually fast since none of my cars are that fast. I'll do you guys even one better. I'm gonna take you in the booth right now and show you the focus. How's that? So Fred just shot the cage this is single stage DOM. It's the same stuff that I used on my go-kart frame. And that's gonna be the actual color of the exterior of the car as well. So the frame is done in this finish. The inside of the shell is gonna be done in white rhino liner. So it has some texture and it's not slippery on the inside of here. So shout out to Fred and Brandon for helping me out with this thing. They still have their own business to run and they're trying to do their own YouTube channel. So I can't hire them full time as much as I would love to have a full time mechanic to help me make progress down on my project cars. 
I just, I can't afford a hundred dollar an hour technician rate, so. Also, if you guys wanna check out some stuff on their channel, they're currently doing this Nitrous K-Series swap in this 2000 SI, so this will be pretty interesting once they start making videos on it. And lastly, Forrester Gump, baking out here in the sun next to his grandpa Gump friend. Uh, I ordered a bunch of parts for this thing off of Japan Parts the other day. So they're all OEM Forrester STITS parts that we never got here in America. It is 110 degrees outside and windy, F that. So there you go. There's your status update on all the cars. And I feel weird because there wasn't a ton of work done in this video despite working 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week on this thing, for like the past month, I'm trying hard. And as you're watching this right now, I'm trying to finish up the rest of the stuff on the car. So the next video you watch on it will be turning the key and seeing what happens, trying to get this thing to run and maybe even taking it for a drive. If everything goes well, nothing screws up. So I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye.